chances for people to figure out a way to do well against you when you've seen all these other fights and Bubba Jenkins truly feels he has the recipe to go out there and beat him. He's been throwing a bunch of one-liners for the last several months, uh, and now tomorrow he wants to throw a bunch of bombs at Lance Palmer's head. That's going to get us started on ESPN2. The main event is one of the most highly anticipated bouts in PFL short history. Anthony Showtime Pettis comes over on a win streak, a fresh, renewed perspective and hunger, and he takes on a formidable striker in his own right in Clay Collard. What do we expect here? Well, Anthony Pettis is one of the most dynamic fighters we've seen in our sport in a dang long time. It almost like he came right out of the Matrix movie in some of the some of the techniques that he's able to pull off in real time against a resisting opponent. I'm excited to see what he does with this guy. Yeah, I tell you what, Clay Collard, though, is extremely motivated. He feels he has all the tools to go out there and pressure Pettis and beat him at his own game. He is one of the best strikers here at the PFL, and he thinks he's going to get a huge upset tomorrow night. And imagine how Natan Schultz feels. Back-to-back -back champion at 155 pounds, and he's not even the main event on the first fight of the regular season. He faces a grappling ace in his season one, excuse me, season three debut. This one promises to be a matchup between two elite grapplers. Yeah, I'm excited to see Natan come back and try and three-peat. He implements his judo game as magnificently as anybody I've seen in mixed martial arts. He keeps plodding forward, puts a lot of pressure on his opponents. He's going to be a great fight. Listen, Natan Schultz is one of the best lightweights in the world, but Marcin Held has the submission skills to go out there and submit any lightweight in the world. His leg lock game is one of the best in the business. That's the ESPN2 portion of the card. That'll be the latter half of the evening on Friday night. Starting at 5.30 Eastern is ESPN Plus action. Let's just go bottom to top, fellas. PFL newcomers Alex Martinez, born in Paraguay, trains in Canada, fought all over the world, and he takes on a season two finalist in Loic Rajabov. Loic, Loic was a, a finalist last year, a Tajikistan star now, introduced the sport of mixed martial arts to his country. The ambassador actually came to the finals. Raw, talented, powerful guy. Going to be interesting to see what he's improved since last 2019's final. And he's taking on Martinez. Uh, not a whole lot of pressure on him. He is undefeated, and he's tall for the weight class. Uh, and he's really excited with this matchup. He feels he's got way more tools than Roger Buff. The people's main event, as we like to call it. Actually, the fans <laughs> had a chance to vote on a 145-pound matchup. Well, how are we going to finish out? How are we going to close out that ESPN Plus card? And the fans spoke and said, we want Brendan Lachnain. That guy, prospect that was on a rise, on a hot streak, and then the pandemic hit. What did he do? He trained nonstop for the 15 months that he was up on the sidelines. I cannot wait to see what he brings to the cage tonight. This is a classic striking battle. Lockname brings a ton of experience into this fight. He's got great hands, great footwork. Uh, and he says now nobody's going to be able to run from him because everybody's got to score points. That brings these opponents to me. I don't have to chase them. Yeah, absolutely. And Marais is not a guy who's going to run away from at all. This guy loves to move forward. He's a phenomenal Muay Thai striker. I do not see this one going the distance. Phenomenal stacked ESPN Plus card. Phenomenal stacked ESPN 2 card. You're going to want to be tuned in on ESPN Plus and ESPN 2 on Friday night. First fight of the night, Alexander Martinez representing Paraguay versus Loic Rajabov out of Tajikistan. We send it over to Lillian Garcia because this is the 2021 PFL regular season weigh-in show. Thank you, Sean. Yes, we are ready. And in the blue corner, fighting out of Grand Prairie, Alberta, Canada, and representing Paraguay, please welcome Alexander Martinez. Was this close in his own mind to winning the season two championship against Natan Schultz. We spoke to him, he wants revenge. And after he gets revenge, he wants showtime. We'll see how it plays out for him. Fight number two on our ESPN Plus card. Two newcomers as well, Tyler Diamond and Joe Sung Bin, our first representative in the PFL from South Korea. And of course, as you mentioned earlier, Randy, this is a very diverse roster, 22 countries represented in season three. Uh, I think it's interesting that we have 22 countries re represented and two thirds of this field 
for this season in 2021 is all new to the Professional Fighters League. Six returning champions, gonna mix it up with a whole new field of fighters. Pretty amazing. And Joe Sung Bin is actually a model and actor in his native South Korea. Uh, he's taking on a guy in Tyler Diamond, who I don't think he'll mind me saying is quite opposite of all of those trappings. <laughs> the man cares about one thing, and that is fighting. And he actually is a training partner of our two-time champion, Lance the Party Palmer, Kenny. Tyler has a magnificent mullet, first of all. So I, I, I'm taking that as a diss, man. Listen, uh, Tyler is an excellent fighter. He really is good everywhere. Lance Palmer himself said he's probably one of the best fighters in the division. They might face each other, and he hopes to face him potentially in the finals. But Tyler Diamond, very motivated right now, has a nine-week-old at home, so he's ready to take home the big prize. Lillian Garcia will introduce these two newcomers on the scale. Ladies and gentlemen, in the blue corner, fighting out of Oroville, California, Tyler Diamond. Official weight, 145 and three quarter pounds. His opponent, in the red corner, fighting out of Seoul, South Korea, the Korean Falcon, Jo Sung Bin. Official weight, 145 and one half pounds. Our third fight of the night on ESPN Plus will feature a familiar face to PFL fans, but he's at a new weight. Chris Wade will welcome the newcoming Frenchman, Anthony Dezee, to Professional Fighters League action. And I tell you what, it is actually rare for Chris Wade to go in against someone who fancies himself a better wrestler, but Anthony Dezee thinks that that might be his best advantage in this fight, Kenny. Yeah, listen, Anthony Dezee, he's been fighting all over the world. Uh, he is a very good wrestler, has some power in his hands as well, but for the most part, he gets his best work done with his takedown game, especially his Greco-Roman game, which Randy Couture knows all about. <laughs> well, Dezee is coached by Ghani Yulouz, who's a couple-time world champion for, the, for France. Uh, but Chris Wade, also a state champion in New York in wrestling. He's got a great wrestling background. He's got a bit of a chip on his shoulder. He's come down from 155 because he was kind of on the bubble and may not make it back into the field for the PFL. Went down a weight class, and now we see him here at 145. It's going to be interesting to see if he can impose his will. Well, we'll let him weigh in and see how that weight cut went. Back to Lillian Garcia. In the blue corner, fighting out of Rons of France, here is Anthony Desi. Official weight, 145 and one half pounds. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, from Islip, New York, Chris Wade! Official weight, 146 pounds. The action continues at 155 pounds with Mikhail Odinsov representing Belarus, taking on exciting striker Ahmed Aliyev out of Astrakhan, Russia. This should be a very interesting matchup. We know a lot about Ahmed Aliyev at this point. Odinsov is a relative unknown. 
Aliyev is an amazing striker, very slick, very subtle. He, he uh, sets people up very, very well. It's going to be interesting to see how he deals with this wrestler who's going to come try and put him on his back. That's right, Odinsov comes from that wrestling background. Pretty good, pretty good on the feet as well. Has some serious power. He's going to be big for the division, certainly bigger uh, than Aliyev here. Uh, but he has been dealing with a lot of issues. Actually came to the States by himself. Doesn't have anyone in his corner at that point. So uh, very interesting. Over to Lillian Garcia. As we continue in the blue corner, fighting out of Minsk, Belarus, here is Mikhail Odinsaw. Official weight, 156 and one half pounds. His opponent in the red corner, fighting out of Astrakhan, Russia, Ahmed Aliyev. <laughs> Official weight, 155 and one quarter pounds. So if you didn't catch it there, Mikhail Odinsov missed weight by just four tenths of a pound. Season three in PFL, that is a pretty costly mistake because he not only loses the opportunity to gain points in this particular round of the regular season, he also is penalized the points. So Mikhail Odinsov starts season three at minus one in the standings. And Kenny, you mentioned earlier that he had some issues with travel. His corners and coaches could not get visas. He came over by himself. As we all know, oftentimes it's your corners and coaches that help you cut that last pound, half a pound. And unfortunately for Odinsov, he wasn't able to get it done. Yeah, absolutely. I'm no math major, but negative one is not good. That is not good. I repeat, not good. So, yeah, I mean, he's got some work to do, absolutely. And, yeah, it, it really is a team effort, especially when you're in there and you're cutting weight, whether you're going to the sauna or trying to you know, move around to cut weight. You need those guys, other coaches, uh, to help you get through that. Not having that, that is a huge disadvantage, and I'm, I'm kind of not surprised by that. Well, it's, it's great that they're still having this fight because Aliyev needs to be able to score points. He's getting yeah. three points for the walkover for Odinsov not making weight, but he needs those bonus points. Every single match, every single point counts to be able to get to that postseason and have a shot at the championship. We continue our action on ESPN Plus with another lightweight bout. Two more newcomers, Paush Manfio, Brazilian now training in South Florida. Joelton Luderbach is also Brazilian, but he's representing Germany where he now lives and trains. This, this is a matchup of opponents who feel relatively familiar with one another. And when you talk about familiarity, Haush Manfio, he wants the championship opportunity. He wants the million dollars that comes with it. But if he's gonna get there, he hopes he can somehow avoid the season one and two champ, Natan Schultz, because they're best friends. And in fact, Natan Schultz is the godfather of Manfio's daughter. That's how tight those two are. Well, Luderbach decided to take his wife's name and represent Germany since Brazil is so well represented in the sport of MMA. So pretty interesting guy. He, want, he does not care about the money. He wants to see uh, how he can win and be effective in each and every fight. Yeah, Joelton is a, a true character. One of the more hilarious interviews that we did this week. But Haush uh, is very motivated. You know, he's a guy who is training with Natan Schultz every single day. So he feels like that has been a great gauge to where his skill set is at. He believes that he can get to the final and eventually fight uh, one of his best friends. So very interesting storyline here in 2021 season. Lillian Garcia has them on the scale. In the blue corner, fighting out of Porto Alegre, Brazil, here is Haush Manfio. Official weight, 156 pounds.
His opponent in the red corner, fighting out of Dusseldorf, Germany, Joelton Luderbach. <laughs> Official weight, 155 and three quarter pounds. And our final bout on ESPN Plus, dubbed the People's Main Event because this one was voted into the spot it occupies on the card. Brendan Lochnane, the lone representative on our roster from Great Britain, takes on Shaman Marias, who is one of the more tried and true featherweights here in the PFL. And this one promises to be a barn burner. Both men have told us that they're looking for the finish. What do you think happens here, Kenny Florian? Oh man, you know, this is a tremendous fight between two very elite strikers. Shimon Moraes comes from that Muay Thai background. And you have Brendan Lochnane, a guy who really can do it all. He's dangerous everywhere, has tremendous footwork. Again, this is one of those fights. That I'll be very surprised if this one goes the distance, guys. Lochnane's an interesting guy, very, very pure striker. And he took in Odinsov, who had some trouble with his corpsman. And they've been training together here in lockdown, getting ready in the bubble. And he's learned a little wrestling from Odinsov, which has been pretty cool. What an olive branch. Brendan Lochnane has a great heart. Lochnane's been champing at the bit to be part of the regular season playoffs and have an opportunity for that championship. Lillian Garcia faces the two off. Ladies and gentlemen, fighting out of the blue corner. From Niteroi, Brazil, here is Shimon Moraes. His official weight, 146 pounds. And his opponent in the red corner, fighting out of Manchester, England, Brendan Lopnane. His official weight, 146 pounds. That will conclude our six fights on ESPN Plus. And as I told you before, ESPN2 promises to bring a barn burner of a card. This begins at 9 p.m. Eastern. Two back-to-back -back champions in the PFL. One of the most accomplished strikers in the history of mixed martial arts in Anthony Pettis and the owner of the fastest knockout in PFL history in Movlid Haibulayev. And that's just on one side of the card, fellas. This one is going to be a lot of fun. There are some amazing matchups in, in this part of the card. I am very excited to see all these guys get after it, see how it all shakes out, see who scores points and who's going to make it to the postseason and who's going to have some work cut out for them in their second fights in the regular season. Yeah, absolutely. What a card. Uh, watch out for the flying Dagestani. That guy's <laughs> knees are ridiculous. He's also a tremendous wrestler. Watch out for that guy. We start things off on ESPN2 with a, a fight that is years and years in the making in the minds of a lot of mixed martial arts and wrestling fans. One guy, one kryptonite for Lance Palmer's wrestling is Bubba Jenkins. He proved it many, many times, but it was a while ago and it wasn't in a mixed martial arts cage. Does it come into play in this fight, Randy Couture? Well, it's really going to be interesting to see how Lance deals with the pressure of a guy that's beat him in wrestling three times to one. 
It's not that Lance hasn't beat Bubba, too. He has, but uh, Bubba has the nod there. Lance relies very heavily on his wrestling and his fighting style. It's going to be interesting to see if that gets neutralized. Then it boils down to the other stuff. Who's the better striker? Who's the better submission guy? Can Bubba take Lance down? We haven't seen that yet in the PFL. He's undefeated in the PFL, so he's putting a lot on the line here against a very formidable opponent. Yeah, so far, it doesn't seem like Lance is taking the bait. You know, he's not really playing into the head games of Bubba Jenkins at all. But Bubba is definitely trying. He <laughs> believes he's a better athlete. He believes he's made huge improvements with his striking. And it may very well come down to striking tomorrow night. Lillian Garcia faces these old familiar faces off. Gentlemen, fighting out of the blue corner by way of Virginia Beach and fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, here is Bubba Batman Jenkins. You have been 3-1 against Lance Palmer in college wrestling. What do you expect to happen tomorrow night against him? Uh, when you know history, it, it repeats itself. Uh, I keep getting questions about the old. I keep getting questions about what I used to do, how we used to get down. I'm going to show y'all a new me. He's going to try to show me a new him. And we're going to see what it ends. He's going to come forward. I'm going to come forward. I know everything about him. He know everything about me. No secrets. I just feel like I'm the better fighter. Well, Lance, you are a two-time champion here in the PFL. So do you have anything to say to Bubba with what he just responded with? Not at all. He said it for me. Uh, we both know each other very well. We've known each other for decades. Um, this is just another opportunity for us to both go out and show that we're the best at what we do. And that's all there is to it. I mean, everything else is done. All we do is go to work tomorrow and uh, take my quest for a third title. And he steps into my cage tomorrow, but the respect's always going to be there. Well, I got to tell you, they didn't talk trash. They maybe even downplayed yeah. it a little bit, but this is Lance Palmer on a quest for three straight championships, three straight $1 million prizes. And for Bubba Jenkins, who's had a very respectable career, he's never knocked off anyone the caliber of Lance Palmer. And in doing so, he could potentially completely derail Palmer's plans for that championship. This is a huge fight. Every fight matters in the Professional Fighters League. I agree with that 100%. I think they both took the high road. They both took the respectful road. I appreciate that myself, and I, I think this is going to be a great fight to watch. Fireworks, for sure. This is like a movie scenario to me, guys. I mean, these guys have been wrestling each other since they were little kids, and here they are about to face off as professional mixed martial arts fighters. I love this story, and I think tomorrow is going to definitely deliver some serious fireworks. Moving on in our ESPN2 card. A featherweight bout between Movlid Haibulayev, they call him the killer. And a PFL newcomer, Lazar Stojadinovic, he's representing his native Serbia, but he lives and trains in Florida now. I cannot help but recall when Movlid Haibulayev came into the Professional Fighters League. He was a relative unknown, and if you've been watching PFL action, Randy, all you have seen for the last two years is yeah. that flying knee over and over and over again. Well, now it's Stoyez Dinovic, who's the newcomer. He has that same opportunity against the killer. Well, the killer has been very, very impressive, not only with submission skills, but that flying knee in 13 seconds of the fight was a remarkable thing. I think we all jumped out of our seats. We look forward to seeing what he brings and how this matchup unfolds. It's going to be a very competitive one. Yeah, Stojadinovic feels that he's maturing at the right time. He loves this position as the underdog here against Habalayev. Lillian Garcia puts him on the scale for us. In the blue corner, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, and representing Serbia, here is Lazar, Bronx Bomber, Stojadinovic. Official weight, 145 and three-quarter pounds. In the red corner, fighting out of Dagestan, Russia, Movlid Havilaev. Official weight, 145 and one-half pounds. But 
but wait, wait, there's more. Not just one back-to-back -back champion on this season three regular season opener. Natan Schultz also looking for his third title in just as many seasons, but he takes on a grappling ace in Marching Hell. How do you see this one playing out? Kenny, you first. Well, listen, Marching Held is, has the equivalent of what many people have is that one punch knockout. Uh, he has that with his leg lock game. He is dangerous from any type of clinch situation. He says he's been working on his wrestling game as well to try to force this fight and put Natan Schultz on his back. Really curious to see who the better grappler is here tomorrow night. It's going to be a very interesting matchup. Natan Schultz had a lot of naysayers after the first season, his first victory in championship. I think he answered those questions in the second, but now to three-peat, he has definitely got a target on his back. He's, he implements his judo game as well as anybody I've ever seen, and he just relentlessly pressures his opponents. It'll be interesting to see if he can keep this fight standing, use his own judo to take this guy down and put him on his back. He's already got two titles. He's already got two $1 million prizes. And you can make an argument that he's not even in his athletic prime yet. Still a very young man. Lillian Garcia has these guys on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, in the blue corner, fighting out of Tiffy Poland, Marcin Hell. Official weight, 155 and three quarter pounds. His opponent in the red corner, fighting out of Jean Billet, Brazil. He is the two time PFL lightweight world champion, Natan Russo Schull. Official weight, 156 pounds. That was our co-main event. This is the main event of the regular season opener for the Professional Fighters League. Anthony Showtime Pettis, highly anticipated newcomer to Professional Fighters League action, takes on one of the toughest strikers in all of mixed martial arts, the boxer, Clay Collard. I cannot wait for this main event matchup. What are we expecting here? Well, I think we know what Pettis is going to bring. He's, he's a dynamic, dynamic fighter, striking, spinning, running off the cage, kicking guys in the head. He does all kinds of things that you cannot imagine a guy pulling off in a real resisting fight. Uh, it's remarkable. So I'm excited to see what he pulls out for this one. Well, Clay Collard, again, feels like he has the style to really give Anthony Pettis everything he can handle out there. He feels that not only can he get the win, he feels he can get the finish against Anthony Pettis. He is very confident. My palms are all sweaty. The main event <laughs> fighters will square off with Lillian Garcia. In the blue corner, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, here is Cassius Clay Collar. Official weight, 154 and one half pounds. His opponent in the red corner, fighting out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Here is Anthony Showtime Pettis. Official weight, 156 pounds. They don't call you showtime for nothing. What can we expect now that you are in the PFL to happen tomorrow night? Everybody knows when I go out there, I put on a show. I've got a great opponent that's going to come bring it. Um, I'm excited to go out there and just handle business. Clay, do you have any comments to that? 
Yeah, I'm just gonna show up and fight and do my thing. That's why I came here, so. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Good luck to you. A business-like approach from our two <laughs> main event fighters. I am giddy about this one. Listen, elite striking is sometimes hard to come by in mixed martial arts. We have not one, but two main event fighters who are truly elite in their given crafts of the striking art. This one, I promise you, is worth the price of admission. Absolutely, while it lasts. Again, both of these guys are just dynamos on the feet. These guys will be looking for the finish. And when Anthony Pettis, you know, what he said this week really stood out to me. He said, if this was a couple years ago, I probably would have been overwhelmed by the lights and the pressure and all that stuff. But he feels that he's been investing himself in, in himself. He has a sports psychologist now. And mentally, he feels stronger than ever. And physically, he feels stronger than ever. And Collar says he's got the kryptonite. He knows the, uh, the, the formula to beat a guy like Pettis, and that's going to be to come forward and pressure him as much as he can. Remember, it all goes down tomorrow night. Season three, regular season action. The Professional Fighters League, MMA's only league, is back. We start on ESPN Plus at 5.30 Eastern from the Ocean Casino Resort. We continue on ESPN2 at 9 p.m. Eastern. Points on the line, standings on the line, a trip to the playoffs and potential championship with that $1 million prize. The quest begins tomorrow. Pettis versus Collard, we'll see you then.